Today we're going to be working on listing rooms in the menu because right now we can create rooms and we can name rooms and we can view the room but we can't actually join any rooms and that's going to be important for when we play the game. So I'm going to start here by making a new menu. I'm going to call it find room menu and add a menu component to that. Call it find room. And then disable our loading menu so we can edit this. I'm probably going to actually take the air text at the top, rename it title text, and we're going to call this find room. And then here I'm going to create an uh, image which we can use as our room list background. 600, and then I'm going to make it stretch to fill vertically. A bit of spacing on the top spacing on the bottom and then I'll make it just a little darker than the background like that okay I'm gonna rename this room list content and then at the butt at the bottom the bottom here I'm gonna add a button a back button all right I'm gonna set up this button to menu manager, open menu, title, and I just noticed in here actually I was at a closed menu that should be open. All right, so now we've got our menu set up. Let's add the actual code. I'm gonna open up my launcher script here, and in my launcher script, I'm going to add a new override method called on room list update. And here at the bottom, public override void on room list update. And this is going to give us a list of room info, which is uh, Photon's room information class. This is going to give us all the info about our room, like the name, the max number of players, any properties, which we might add in the future. All right, so what I want this to do is when we get an updated version of the room list, I want to destroy all the current buttons that we have on our list and then add the new buttons for the rooms. So I'm going to make a new serialized field transform room list content and then a new game object room list prefab list item prefab. All right, so I'm going to go back into our menu here and actually add a vertical layout group component to this. Get stretch on the width and add some spacing. Apply some padding too, maybe 10 on each side. I'm going to make a new button here. So I'm tall and I'm going to set this font size to 45 and then I'm going to set the room name. And this button is going to be our room item prefab. So I'm going to create a new folder called prefabs. And drag our button in uh, there. Rename it room list item. And then on our prefab here, I want to stretch it out just so we can see it in the prefab editor. I'm going to add a new script called room list item. All right. And I'm going to open that up in Visual Studio. And uh, really all this needs to do is set the text to the name of the room. And then when we click it, we want it to join the room. That's all our room button needs to do. So I'm going to make a new public void setup. And then room info. I press alt enter to automatically import photon.realtime, or you can just type this in, Visual Studio just nicely auto automatically does that for me. I'm info, info. And then I'm gonna serialize field for our text, and then a public void on click. And this is where we'll join the room when the button is clicked. So for setup, I'm just going to say text.text .text equals info.name. And then I'll also include a reference from info info. You can make this have an underscore so it's separate from 
our global variable and then info equals info. So we're assigning the room info we got in the setup method to our uh, variable in our class so that we can reference it later in the on click so that we can join it. So now in our launcher, uh, when we get a room list, let's loop through the list and instantiate a room list item prefab in the room list content dot get component room list item dot set up room list i there we go so that'll instantiate our room list item prefab in our room list item container and then we'll get the room list item component from it and call the setup method with the room info that we want to assign to it all right, and I'm also gonna do for each transform trans in room list content. I'm just gonna destroy that. So that we clear the list every time we get an update. Now let's go back into our menu. Our title menu, I actually want this um, find room button up at the top here to tell our menu manager to open find room, room. Open menu find room we have to add this to our list of menus all right now let's assign those references in the inspector here room list content and the room list item prefab and we can disable this and re-enable our loading menu as the start now back in Visual Studio, I want our on click to actually join the room. So in our launcher, we're going to make a new public void join room, room info info. We're going to call photon network dot join room. And we're going to say info dot name. And then we're going to open the loading menu because it'll take us a bit to join the room. And then in our on join room function, which we already have here, it's going to open the room menu and update the room text, the room name text. That's great. So that functionality is done. Now we just need a way to call that method. So I'm going to make this launcher a singleton too. Public static launcher instance. And our awake instance equals this. And then in our room list item, we can say launcher.instance. Join room info. There we go. So that functionality is done now. Find room. There we go. Sent to the find room menu. If we click back, it goes back to the main menu. That's great. Now, in order to test this, I'm actually going to need to build the game so that we can run it separately from the Unity editor so that we can create a room and then join it from the other application. So in my project settings here, I'm just going to set the default um, full screen mode to windowed and then I'm going to leave it at that so that I can move it around my screen. Alright so on our roomless item we now have to assign the actual text component here so we don't get an error when we build it. I'm going to go into file, build settings, make sure my scene is added and then build and run. I made a new build folder in my, in my actual Unity project and you can build it anywhere, it doesn't really matter, but I'm going to select that folder and build it there. I just like to build it in my Unity project folder because it keeps it more organized. Alright, once it's built, it'll automatically run because we clicked build and run. And once we're in here, I'm going to try and create a room. Room test, create. And then back in Unity, I'll run the game. Then we can do find room and we can see the room here, room test. If we click that, then nothing will happen because on the room list item, we also have to, in this on click event, assign the room list item, room list item on click. All right, great. Now back in our scene, if we run this, find room, click it, we'll join the room. Great, now we're in room test. Both our built client and the Unity editor are both in the room test. And the next step will be listing the players in the current room. All right, so since our player list is gonna be so similar to our find room list, 
Um, I'm just going to copy this room list content and paste it into the room menu. Have that in the middle. Great. And then I'm going to make another prefab for our player list item here. And I think that I'm just going to make it a text object because all we're displaying is our username. We don't need a button or anything. So I'm going to make that centered probably and then I'll say player name and we can rename this player list item. Just add it to our prefabs. All right, now on our player list item here, I'm gonna add a new component, call it player list item. And I want the player list item to be responsible for destroying itself when the player leaves the room. So basically the architecture I'm thinking here is when a player joins the room, the launcher will receive a callback and it will instantiate the player list item. And then when a player leaves the room, the player list item will register that and then destroy itself. So we're also going to have to derive this from mono behavior pun callbacks. Make sure you're using photon.pun. And then I can say public void set up player player. And we'll have to use photon.realtime too. All right. I'm also going to include a reference to the player here, player, player, that we're going to use later. I'll make this an underscore so that we can tell the difference, and we'll assign it here. And then we'll need a reference to our text. Um, text is fine. Text dot text equals player dot nickname. Okay, and we haven't actually assigned a nickname to our players yet, so we'll do that after this. Now, we also want to do public override void on player left room, and this is going to take the parameter player other player, and that's going to be the player that left the room. So we're going to compare if our player is the same as other player, then we can destroy this game object because our player left the room, so we, we want to destroy this. And then we also want to do public override void on left room. We want to destroy ourselves too. Because if we leave the room, then we can't see the players in it anymore. So we'll just destroy that. Now in our launcher, I'm going to include a reference to our player list item prefab and also our player list content. So now that we have these referenced, when we receive the callback public override void on player entered room, we can instantiate, oh, we'll just copy this. Instantiate player list item prefab and player list content. Get component player list item dot set up new player. All right. Now, in our launcher, also, just for now, when we have joined the lobby, we're just going to set our photon network dot nickname to be player plus random dot range zero to 1000 dot two string zero 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 zero. And this is going to just generate a random name for our player, which we'll use as a placeholder until we implement an actual username system. So on our player list item, we can delete that from this and also name this player list content. On our canvas, we can assign player list content, player list item, and then our player list item here, scaled up for viewing, and we can Make sure we have the player list item component on here. And assign this as the text. Great. Now, if we don't start it with that open, that's wrong. Let's start with our loading menu open. All right. Start the game. Click create a room. Test create room. So actually, I've just realized the only override we have here is when a player enters the room, and that's not going to be called when we enter the room. That's only going to be called when another player enters the room. So we also need to um, make sure when we join the room that we that we um, instantiate uh, a new player list item for all the players. So I'm going to make a loop here, 
photon network dot player list dot count. Let's actually store this. So we don't have to retrieve it twice. And then players.count. For each player in our player list, we're going to instantiate a new player list item and set it up with players i. So we're going to loop through the entire list and create a new player list item for every player in that list. Funny thing is I actually added this to the wrong function. It should not go in join room, it should be in on joined room, our override. This is when we click on a room button. This is called when we click a room button, not when we actually join the room. So now, if we create a room, test, create room. There we go, there's our player name in the room. This is gonna be the list of players. So if I build the game with control B, and then I can run the game in the Unity Editor too. Create a room, test, create room, and then I'll do find room, test. Join that room, and now we can see that on both um, screens, uh, we can see that the players have actually joined. And if I run this again, and go to find room, then I can find the room, and bam, now all three of us are in. And it syncs up our names. All right. That's great. And that's going to be the end of this episode. We covered joining rooms and also listing players in the rooms. God, I'm thirsty. Let's have a drink.